Grand Rising, how are you guys doing? I hope that you guys are having a blessed Sunday morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on where you are in the world. I want to talk to you about something that I believe that the more the most high is speaking to my Ruach about. Um, we often hear people, and the word even says that we should love our neighbor as we love ourselves. And you know, we hear a lot of talk about love, right? And you know, <laughs> a lot of us have a lot of different interpretations of what what love looks like and what love is supposed to manifest how it's supposed to manifest <laughs> if someone loves you or even if you love yourself this is what loving yourself looks like but what does loving yourself look like we need to back that up a little bit because if the word says we ought to love our neighbor as we love ourselves yet the foundation of love is loving ourselves but what does that look like and I've never heard anybody rightfully divide the word or even question that I mean I've heard people hit or miss talk about what self-love looks like what you do if you love yourself right and what we what I've gotten from different interpretations and just looking at people and listening to people self-love is supposed to look like you know what you do with this body you know self-love means you take care of yourself self-love means that you know for us ladies you go get your hair your nails and your feet done you know and you know you present yourself in a, in a manner that's outwardly acceptable to the people and to the public. That's how you show people that you love yourself. And if you show people that you love yourself, then that means you should be able to properly love these people. So because this is what's taught and believed among the masses, we, we think that if we take somebody to go get their hair and their nails and their feet done, or if we give them a, a free makeover, let's say you see a homeless guy, like I'm out here walking, apparently, and you know, the area that I walk through um, has a lot of homeless people. Um, for those of you who don't know, Knoxville is not homeless friendly. There are not a lot of services for homeless people in Knoxville. So you will, it's easy for you to see tents here, tents on the side of the highway, in the woods, because they've, this is the city, the government, the police have um, closed down all of the places, all of the homeless camps where the homeless used to be able to camp out at, um, that I feel was relatively more safe than what they're doing right now what they're being forced to do, which is very sad to me, but anywho, so we'll go get a homeless person off the street, right? People are like, I can never love this homeless person as I love myself. It says, I just came from beauty and nail spa and spent $150 on myself. I'm going to go grab the homeless lady off the street and, and I'm going to pay for her to get her nails and her feet done and her hair done and she's going to feel glamorous just for a day so she can love herself, right? And, and you know, <laughs> I suppose maybe perhaps it comes from a, gr a good place. The people who do that, I don't think they don't mean to be ignorant of what it is to be in poverty or be homeless, but they feel like that's their, they're doing their part to help the less fortunate. Huh? Loving our neighbor as we love ourselves is 
helping people to do stuff with this outside flesh that's always just temporary, by the way. And it's never lasting. It's never effective ministry. Um, and so I think about these things because I see it done a lot. And it's not to throw off or anything or anyone that has does do these things or they are doing these things. But I went to, I'm going to tell you why I'm thinking about this. Because I attempted, I haven't gotten my feet done in three years. I am not ashamed to sit here on social media and admit I haven't gotten my feet done in three years. And I walk a lot. My feet is tore up. You understand? <laughs> But I have a little self-care kit. I have my little thing that I soak my feet in and massage my feet. And I do my own feet as I am able. It's not professional because I did not go to school for it. But, you know, I've managed to take care of my feet my way. Why? Well, during the pandemic, we all knew what happened. You know, everything was shut down and... Oh my God, people was just going off. Certain people were going off because they couldn't go to the nail shop and get their nails and feet done. They couldn't go to the hair salon and get their hair done. Certain people was rioting and protesting behind being able to be glamorous. <laughs> it was just like, yo, really? Out of all the things that we could protest, we're going to protest that... Becky couldn't get her hair done or her nails or her feet done? Really? Anywho. Um, and I realized, you know, of course, I said, okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and try to treat myself. You know? And I went in there. I don't know. When I go into a nail shop, it's a spirit. And people say, you just you're making it too deep. No, I'm sorry. I'm a spiritual person. And I'm, I, I sense things spiritually that some people may not. I go in the nail shop and I promise you, it could be in the hood or it could be one of those real fancy nail shops where they give you wine and they put the towel on your face and they just do, you know, treat you like royalty. No matter where I go. And this has been since I went to nail shops. In the past maybe what, 20 years there's a spirit in all of these places that I don't like it's not Buddha either don't do that <laughs> but it's a vanity spirit it's a vain spirit huh and I just I just sat there and I was like oh, I don't like that you know don't get it twisted you see me up on social media and I post my pictures and I'm not going to get into what I look like or whatever. That's, that's the most high's business. But if you know me in person, practically speaking, people who are closest to me know that I'm really not that chick. I am not that woman that spends a whole lot of time on making herself up. I still, as a 52, 53-year-old grandmother, I still don't know how to put eyeliner on. I've never been able to put on eyeliner. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Even before I became a part of the Pentecostal church, um, as a teenager, I'm checking myself in the eye. My eyes are red and I'm crying. And I'm like, you know what? Eyeliner is not for Winona. <laughs> I'm not doing this no more. I'm not stabbing myself in the eye with a pencil to be beautiful. Because somebody said that this is what you do when you love yourself. Huh? And, you know, in the past 20, 30, maybe even 40 years, it's gotten worse, y'all. The vanity the vain spirit among women yeah I'm talking to my females mostly we are just you know because I don't know maybe it's a part of the divine feminine 
worshiping women. I mean, come on. A woman made angels fall, y'all. Women, daughters of men, made angels fall. So I get it. When y'all made a woman, he made an incredible being. But we are not supposed to be worshipped. Ladies, it is not okay to set yourself up to be worshipped and idolized. It is not okay to call yourself goddesses. That is not self-love. That is self-worship. Huh. Y'all not going to hear me. And I understand most people won't get it. In this day and age, we have Beyonce, Cardi B's, and Meg the Stallions, and all these females. And we all want to be like them. And that's not it, ladies. That's not what self-love is. Loving ourselves is not how often we could go and get our nails and feet and our hair done. Because what are you, what are you loving about yourself? Your flesh. Your glorifying flesh. Huh? Well, we are spiritual beings. We are spiritual beings. Huh? And that's not good. That's idolatry. And idolatry is a sin in the eyes of the Most High. We need to stop allowing the world, allowing men to worship us, ladies. We are dust. We are dust. We are nothing. You hear me? That's not self-love. How do we love ourselves? We love ourselves first and foremost by submitting ourselves to the will of the Father. See, he, Yahuwah is the only one who can truly fill us with self-love. Because you know, <laughs> there are a lot of females that do all kinds of stuff with their flesh. Hmm? Doll it up, doctor it up, snip it, tuck it, prim and prime it. We go get all kinds of surgeries. Some surgeries are necessary. If you're doing it for health purposes, and you're not doing it for vain or vanity. Um, get our nails, we spend, I want you to tally up how much you've spent on getting your nails did, your feet did. Just, just Manny and Petties. Getting the fillings, getting all the designs. Take, tally that up. What you have spent in a 12 month period. And when you see that, that total, you're gonna be angry with yourself. You could have taken that money and put aside that money for a college fund. If you wanna send your kid to college, you could have taken that money and have a down payment. At least a good down payment for a house. That's if you want to be a homeowner. Or if you're more um, of a, I don't want to call myself a philanthropist, but if you're more of a person that likes to give, right now, as bad as the US dollar is doing, it still has a lot of value in most third world countries. The dollar could feed some children that hasn't eaten in a week. Your dollar can pay school fees because they don't have free public education around the world, y'all. In some of the most poorest countries, they have to pay for their education for their child. Huh? Your dollar could have paid for a 
Can you imagine? Huh? Forty dollars paying for school for a year for a kid. You spend that on one. You spend more than that going to the nail and beauty shop one time. You could send a, a whole family of kids to school for a year and buy their uniforms for what you dropped at the nail shop, ladies. Why? Because I, this is how I show myself that I love myself. No, this is how you self-worship yourself. And with now everything that is going to be, that is so expensive now, gas is above $5 a gallon in most places in the country. How many females are going to start feeling like they don't love themselves because they can't afford to doll themselves up anymore? I'm not throwing off on nobody who does, who chooses to do these things. I'm just saying. Loving ourselves is looking out for the needs of others. Huh? Loving ourselves has nothing to do with us. Y'all ain't never heard that, huh? It's not about us. It's not about us. Loving our neighbor as ourselves is making sure that your neighbor got a place to stay. Loving our neighbor as we love ourselves is making sure that they got food to eat, that they're being taken care of. That's self-love. And unfortunately, that's not being taught. We live in a narcissistic, selfish time and generation. Hold on. We live in a selfish time and generation where we really don't care about the needs of others. And then now we have these, you know, we try to do so much with these bodies. Now they're coming up with all kinds of procedures, medical breakthroughs, they call it, to try to prolong life, make these bodies robotic, superhuman. Cloning humans, they've been doing that for a minute you know the self-preservation spirit that's not of the most high we have to understand that we belong to the most high we don't belong to ourselves huh and we live in a generation and I, when I say generation I'm not talking about age, because I see this spirit in 60-year-olds and 16-year-olds. Our bodies do not belong to us. We belong to the Most High Yah. Therefore, we do what He say, what He instructs us to do. Not what we want to do. We want to do what we want to do with this body. We want to shape it up, snatch it up, pretty it up, put a six pack on it up. We want to do all kinds of stuff. Now we're getting to the point we want to procreate how we want to procreate. Oh, I don't want a little girl. I want a little boy. So now they're, they're manipulating the fertilization and the fetuses so that they can make what they want to make. Huh? We don't belong to ourselves, people. And the minute we start believing that we do and start doing the things that we want to do, huh? Just the self, it's the self preservation spirit. Yeah, I did. I left the nail shop because I was like, I don't like this. Plus, they, it was crowded because, of course, I had a lot of people in there. And I, I'm not a people person. 
Can you tell? <laughs> I don't like being among people for too, too long. I don't. Don't. I'm not afraid of people. I just don't like being around people that long. It's like, oh, because I feel spirits. I feel your spirit. I know what you're thinking before you open up your mouth. I know what your intention is before you say, hey, I just do. And I'd be like, no, not them. And most I say, you hear what I say. That's a devil right there. Stay away from that one. <laughs> so because I have that, that that's, I guess it's discernment. It's the Ruach HaKadosh operating. I have learned to be obedient to it. And the older I get, the stronger it gets. <laughs> Which is why I don't like being around people. And I'm like, this is a spirit up here. I don't like this. I'm out. And I'm like, huh, I'll go home and do my own feet. <laughs> I'll go home and take care of myself. Because I, I don't... I'm not doing it so people say, girl, your toes is fine, girl, yeah. No, I'm doing it because, yeah, it's good to take care of your feet. Especially the older you get. But these little people that's being in these shops, they're just making money. They're not anointed necessarily to take care of your feet. They're anointed to make your feet look pretty. But anyway, that's another topic for another story that I may never get into. But anywho, you know, I don't know. When I get around people that are less fortunate, you know, I went on the trip, mission trip to Nigeria last year, and I saw so much need. And it changed my perspective about so much. The stuff that we think is so important and necessary in this country. <sighs> we have absolutely no idea. Some people say, well, America is blessed. It just depends upon your definition of blessed. America has prospered, but the prosperity has been obtained through illegal means spiritually and you know the time is coming it has come actually where the most high is judging this country for the seeds that this country has sown all over the world that's not unpatriotic it's not a threat it's a prophecy and we see it unfolding whether you want to or not it's unfolding all around us you know you know, <laughs> America want to point the fingers at all these other countries and say how cursed they are and how cursed their leaders are. But America is the reason why a lot of these countries are the way they are. And, and, and <laughs> they're the reason why the leaders do what they do. But you don't know that because they're not going to tell you that. They're going to make you think that America is the world savior. Y'all just don't know. But anyway, that's, that, again, is another video for another time that I don't want to get into right now. Anywho, self-love is not preserving this flesh. Self-love is doing what you need to do to help your neighbor, to make sure that your neighbor is okay, even if it involves sacrifice. Let's learn to sacrifice for one another, especially in our community. When did our community become so selfish? It's self-seeking. and self-preserving. That's them. That's not us. We have to start looking out for one another. We need to start taking care of one another. That's self-love. Your self-love should parlay into a love for your people that says, hey, I'm going to help my people however I can. That's self-love. Not this selfish, self-seeking spirit that it's just about me and mine and no more and I don't care about nobody else. That's not self-love. That's self-hate. It's a sin. We need to repent of that as a people. Anyway, I've ranted and raved enough. Hopefully I said something that helps somebody. Self-love is not what we do with this flesh, y'all. Self-love is what we do for others. 
Y'all be blessed. In the name of Yahushua HaMashiach.